with us right now, Matthew Pollard. Matthew, you are the rapid growth guy. You're found on the web at matthewpollard.com. Matthew, thank you so much for joining us. Mate, it's my absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. Now, for those who are watching the video, which you can find on our YouTube channel, you'll see that behind Matthew, you've got a couple of books. Uh, and that book is The Introvert's Edge. Matthew, are, are you an introvert? I am, mate. I am. I can put those closer for you if you like, but you absolutely, go. I am an introvert. So, you know, it's, and it's funny, a lot of people ask me that question after, like halfway through the interview. And they're like, there's no way that you're introverted. You're so mm. articulate on this podcast. I'm like, that's right, because us introverts all have to hide under a bridge, right? And never talk to anyone. <laughs> you know, the fact of the matter is, uh, introverts can be amazing speakers. They can be amazing yeah. on podcasts. They can sell, they can network. As a matter of fact, I would say they can actually outdo extroverts. The problem is, we just don't know that. We don't don't believe it and we think there's this gift of gab wall that even stops us trying which makes me so sad and that's what the books really are trying to confront mm. so um what is the advantage then that an introvert may have in a business environment or you know we're talking um if we're thinking about like um internet entrepreneurialism too i think a lot of that has to be like listen you got to be out there in front of your audiences you have to be connecting you have to be providing value and uh and and information and 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 teaching and that sort of thing um and and i can say from you know, for me, like, I, I, I love doing that. But at the end of it, like, and I'm sure you've had this, and I think everyone's experiences, when you're so engaged on that stage, right? And then afterwards, for me, it's like, oh, you know, I, I got to lay down because I have just been so incredibly present in that moment. Um, I know it's what I need to do. It, is that what it, like what I just described there? Is that playing into that introvert extrovert uh, matrix? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that one of the biggest hurdles is most people think introverts just can't sell. We can't network. We can't be in front of a camera. The mm. the truth is that you know that both introverts and extroverts can do it really really well. The thing that separates the people that do it really well compared to everybody else and the people that do it poorly are often the people that run with systems. For instance, I mean, if we look at any business, that what businesses last the test of time? What are the businesses that do really well? They're the ones that have systems and processes for everything and stay on mission. And they have the same focus and same consistent messaging. So for anyone, whether an introvert or extrovert, I mean, this isn't new stuff when it comes to sales. Brian Tracy says the top 10% of all sales but uh, uh, performance comes from having a planned presentation. So you think about who has a plan, who's better at planning, well, that would be the introvert. The problem <laughs> is that what happens is that extroverts are great at winging stage presentations. They're mm. great at winging networking events, but that a lot of times isn't positive. Because, oh, you know, Josh, you did an amazing job of that. Can you do the exact same thing again tomorrow to another audience? No chance in the world, because they don't even no. remember what they said. If you right. ask me, absolutely. I can make a couple of adjustments if you'd like. Tell me what you need. Because for me, it's planned. When I go networking, I'm strategic. I'm not transactional. So I don't walk in a room going, do you want to buy from me? Do you want to buy from me? What mm. about you? So it's about really understanding that planning and preparation also applies to networking, sales, and public speaking, and leadership for that matter. The truth is that the people that do it well without planning tend to be the extroverts. The people that tend to hold the plan, though, are the introverts, which is why you generally find the introvert as the best leaders or the worst, the best networkers or the worst, the best salespeople or the worst. Now, to define what an introvert is, because you know I think that that is really important, is an introvert is somebody that draws their energy from mm. being by themselves or with one or two family members perhaps, where an extrovert draws their energy from being with people. So if you're the kind of person that goes to a networking event, at the end of that, you're willing to suggest going out to a, you know, perhaps a bar and keep talking, and then you wanna go home and drive your husband or wife nuts with conversation, guess <laughs> what? You're an extrovert. If you're, <laughs> if you're at the end of that, and maybe, I mean, for me, I enjoy networking and I'm good at it now that I've understood what the system is, but at the end, like a kid at Disneyland, I might've had a blast, but I'm exhausted. And that's what yes. you're finding at the end of the day as well. You've spent so much time and perhaps communicated much more effectively because you're following your strategy that you've created for yourself. That doesn't mean you don't want to hit the pillow at the end of the night because you've had a big day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, I really love, that's such a great reframe, right? Um, I have a lot of confidence that in the right moment, um, you know, I generally do okay, um, but 
but I also have that, you know, um, I don't want to leave that to you. There's no way I want to leave that to you. So I think there's a, you know, I probably lean toward a little bit more toward extroversion, but I think extroverts can learn a lot from introverts and saying, look, okay, I know you have this natural gift here, buddy, but <laughs> let me tell you how you can deliver consistent results rather than just having to fly by the seat of your pants, which is great. You're charming and all that other stuff, but um, that's pretty great. Um, so you've got two books, Matthew. I see one is red, one is white. Is it, is it, or is it the same book? with different jacket or is it well actually so it's a series so oh the first wonderful book, the first book focuses on sales yes. and th so this was the first one that came out when they didn't think i was that good an author so we got a paperback <laughs> and the second one is the red one which now actually we have a white line across there which highlights the word networking a little bit more yeah. and that's the hardcover that's when they realized that my books were doing pretty well so that one did mm. uh, about fifty-five thousand copies so far and it's in 15 languages which is great to see congrats uh, the new one thank you and the new one launched in january and it sold eight and a half thousand copies now and it's been in about i think it's now just been it's, it's just been we've just agreed that it's going to be in three languages so far so you know it's got a lot of way to catch up but it's actually yeah. going much faster which is which is great to see and i think it's you know to be honest with you it's more about introverts realizing they're not second class citizens that's what's caused mm -hmm. this event i mean i think what we had is we had susan kane that said you know don't be ashamed to be an introvert right be empowered like we need the world needs writers they need coders now she also mentioned she was a negotiator but people missed that they went oh no i should just if i'm an introvert i should do these quiet jobs no i mean the truth is that you can be exceptional when you talk about oh you've got that gift of gab you know you, you're charismatic you're charming well the truth is that's an advantage if you're just winging things but if you stop winging things it's actually a disadvantage because most extroverts love winging things so you give them a system that over time will make them perform better but they have to take a small back step first and they like being able to wing things yeah. so because of that they don't want to hold on to a system but an introvert holds on to it for dear life now if you take an introvert with a system and then allow them to channel their natural empathy and active listening skills, which introverts are amazing about. So planning, preparation, great system, empathy and active listening. I mean, we can outsell, out network, out public speak, out lead a lot of our extroverted counterparts, not because we are just better, but because once we get over our weaknesses, our strengths are so, so powerful. Now, yes. An extrovert, on the other hand, I mean, let's face it, we all have our burdens to bear, right? And some might say that extroverts aren't the best listeners and they're perhaps not the most empathetic people in the world. Here's the difference, though. An extrovert will go and realize that, or if they work for a big organization, their HR or their lead, their manager will go, you know what? You're not the most empathetic bloke in the world, or you're not the most, you know, you, you don't tend to listen very well. So because of that, I'm going to send you to perhaps an emotional intelligence class. The difference is that we believe extroverts can learn. We believe introverts have a barrier, a gift of gab wall that stops us helping them. It stops us helping ourselves until we realize that these are just systems. And when we take a systematic approach, we do we do amazingly well. Mm -hmm. And the extrovert goes, oh, system, that's great. Can I just go back to winging things though? I kind of like that. <laughs> it's lazy, but they love it. Yeah. Hey, um, so Matthew, uh, you're known as the rapid growth guy. Um, tell. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so it's it's an interesting concept. So this is one of the, what I call a hook statement when you go networking. So when you go out to a networking room, it's one of the things I talk about in chapter five of my new book. One of the things that we do all the time is somebody will ask us what we do. And what they're asking is, what bucket can I put you in? So for instance, if I was to say, oh, I'm a sales trainer, people will say, oh yeah, no, I'm an introvert, I can't sell. So I then have mm. to go, no, no, you can. And now yeah. I'm dancing for them. Or they'll say, you know what? You know, I had a really bad experience with a sales trainer. I basically think, you know, you guys are one step above scam artists. And what I've got to <laughs> say, no, I'm different. I got magic ruby slippers, right? They put me in a box and like crabs in a bucket, I cannot get out. Or I might say, you know, I'm in marketing. And they're like, oh, I need a marketer. How much do you cost? What, now I've got to talk about price? So the key to success networking is not fitting in that bucket. So let me give an example. You know, I worked with a language coach out of California a long, long time ago. And, you know, she taught kids and adults Mandarin, but she'd go up to people in a networking room and say, you know, what I do is, uh, you know, I, I'm a Mandarin teacher. And people go, oh, I need that or, oh, I don't. Now, the problem she had is there were lots of people moving into California willing to charge kids and adults 30 to $40 an hour to start their own businesses. Just like all these, you know, saturated commoditized markets now, she wanted to charge 50 to $80 an hour. 
So for her, it was getting more and more difficult. She also had to deal with the fact that there's people in China offering to do it for $12 an hour on Craigslist. And, you know, she'd go to a networking event and say, oh, I teach Mandarin. And people go, oh, I'm using an app now. I teach their Mandarin. They teach me English. We don't charge anyone anything. So she's like, Matt, how do I compete in this crowded market? I'm like, well, when we go into networking, you cannot fit in that bucket. So what we did is we looked at the things she did outside the scope of a functional skill. And for a lot of people, she just taught the Mandarin, but for two executives, she helped them with much more. She helped them understand that while in the Western world, you know, if we're trying to sell something, we might at the end of 45 minutes, if we're a bad salesperson say, do you want to move forward? And you'll say, yes, no, everyone's favorite, let me think about it. A week from now, if I check in and you're still thinking, the deal's dead. Mm. But in China, they're probably going to want to meet with you five or six times, perhaps, you know, yeah. see you drunk over karaoke once or twice before they even discuss <laughs> business. It's just, yeah. they are. she helped them understand that. She also helped them understand the difference between e-commerce in China and the Western world, the importance of respect, like learning the language isn't enough. You have to reduce your accent, yeah. how to handle a business card, why it matters. I'm like, Wendy, stop for a second. You do so much more for these people than just language tuition. By the way, so does everyone listening. That's why you've got customers that are constantly singing your praises, happy to pay you a premium. But by the way, nobody gets it because you just talk about your function. And that's what I said, you're stuck in your functional skill. Is it fair to assume as a result of the assistance that you're giving these people, they're gonna be more successful when they get to China? And she's like, well, yeah, I mean, that's the point, right? I'm like, great, forget about Mandarin for a second. Let's create what we call the China Success Intensive, which was a five week program that worked with the executive, the spouse and any children being relocated across to China. Wow. She, now she loved the idea of this, but she's like, well, who do I sell it to? And I'm like, well, who do you think? She's like, obviously the executive. And I'm like, yeah, you'd think that, wouldn't you? I mean, I was terrified <laughs> moving from Australia to the US. I understand that, but that's got you going to every networking event under the sun, trying to find executives. And I think there's a smarter way. So who else could be your ideal client? Probably the corporation. Well, yeah, they have hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of dollars riding on being a success, you know, you being a success, but I still don't think it's the right fit. So well, who then? I said, I think the ideal client for you or the ideal JV partner for you that you should go networking for would be the immigration attorney. And she's like, what? I said, think about it. These people make maybe five to $7,000 for doing a visa, you know, all the paperwork and bureaucracy that comes with that. They've got office space. They've got to hire a client. They've got to pay to get a client a lot of the times. So they'd be lucky to make 3000 I said, so just offer them $3,000 for a successful introduction. They love the idea. She went out networking with these people and think mm. about the difference, by the way. She would then say, she'd listen to them and ask them questions about them. She'd be interested, not interesting. And then eventually they go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I haven't asked you what you do. What is it you do? And she would then talk, she would then say, oh, I'm the China success coach. And she'd stop talking. Now they can't put her in a bucket. They almost have a brain aneurysm. And like, what exactly is that? Then she gets to talk to her about her passion and mission for helping you know, people go to China and be successful. And then she'd say, you know, I can offer you $3,000 for a simple introduction you know, that, that results in a client. They thought it was a great idea. They're like $3,000 for a simple introduction. What do I have to say? She said, all you've got to do is say, congratulations, you've now got your visa. I just want to double check you know, as ready as possible to be relocated across to China. And they would say, yeah, I think we're good. You know, we got a place sorted. Thank you. We've got, we're learning the language now. Kids are getting pretty good at it too. I think we're good to go. And they just respond with, there's actually a lot more to it than that. I think you need to speak to the China success coach. I mean, Wendy would get on the phone with the easiest sale in the world. They were terrified to go. Organization was motivated to pay. She charged $30,000 for this instead of wow. struggling every day to charge $50 to wow. $80 an hour. That is the difference. So when Wendy says, what are the things I do outside the scope of my functional skill? It was respect, e-commerce and relationship. The high level benefit was China success. For me, you know, I'm a business coach, I'm a branding consultant, I'm a social media strategist, I'm an mm. introverted specialist. I mean, too many things, nobody cares. And that's what happens in networking. We open up this fire hose of information and people are like, oh my God, jargon, jargon, jargon. How do I get away from this person? And what do I say? Oh, that's nice. And that's the end of the conversation. So for Wendy, she learned to go to the right networking events, i.e. immigration attorneys, and then say she's the China success coach. For me, I look for introverted service providers. So that's the networking events I go to. And when they ask me what I do, I don't say sales trainer. I don't say marketing specialist. I don't say expert on introversion. Because again, nobody cares about that stuff. When I say I'm the rapid growth guy, people go, what exactly is that? And then mm -hmm. I get to talk about my passion and mission for helping introverts and then segue into a story because they asked. Otherwise, they just assume they don't need it or they go straight to talking about price.
Wow. You know, Matthew, when you, this is, it seems so thought out. And again, I think that this is exactly what you were talking about, right? It's like you, you've mapped out the whole journey. And, and I, I see this a lot where, um, you know, when I'm talking with people, particularly with those who do account-based marketing, right? They just don't have a realistic understanding of what it's going to take. And, and you know, in your story there, you were talking about just what it's going to take. I remember we were uh, struggling at one point a couple of years ago, we had $200,000 a month of recurring revenue just sitting in our pipeline. These are people that gave a buying signal and they weren't pulling the trigger. And I'm like, what's going on? Like they all said yes, but now they're not buying. And it's because I just didn't have a realistic view of who they are, where they are in their life, how busy they are and what they need in order to move them over the line. And, you know, in that, for us, it, it just was, it was a much more realistic view. We had to set up the process and systems so that I would continue to show up in their life in a positive way. And that's absolutely what solved the problem for us. It was um, rather than, you know, just following the advice of some guru or whatever, just, you know, bring them in, you know, truly, truly, truly developing those processes and systems that would help me nurture those relationships in a very authentic way. And that was the thing that solved it for us. Um, and, 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 And it really took someone from the outside to get me to kind of snap out of it and, and see this. So I, I'm really, and I'm, I've actually, I've been jotting down some notes, like you're stimulating ideas. I'm thinking for like our next big project that we're working on, you know, about, um, you know, I love the story of, you know, where she developed all of these key uh, relationships that made her job ultimately much, much easier, right? This is really, really great stuff. I'm really, I'm really enjoying this. Um, Matthew, just because we're running out of time here, um, and and I apologize for this, I, I really am excited to, to chat more with you on this, uh, you know, in, in the future. But um, you have a lot of ways that that you can engage with people when they go to your website. It's MatthewPollard.com. That's P-O-L-L-A-R-D.com. What I like is you've got this nice thing up at the top. It says first time visitors start here. Um, but but maybe that's the place you're going to lead people. For someone who's listening to us, where should they go? What should they do? I, I, I may have just told them. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you know, there's a ton of free videos I put out on social media all the time. And yes. you know, I actually learned to sell watching YouTube videos as an introverted door-to-door salesperson that had no business in selling. So I put a ton of videos out on YouTube as well. But for those people that say, you know, I want that China success coach idea. I want what Wendy has, which by the way, stories have a wonderful way of educating, inspiring yes. while embedding you as the only logical choice, right? So for those people that want that, I mean, in truth, you can create your own version of your unified message and discover your niche by going to matthewpollard.com forward slash growth. There you can actually download a template that will allow you to do it yourself. Now, I always suggest, you know, I did this at the National Freelance Conference, literally 200 people in the room. And at the end, I said, you know, put your hand up if you now have a unified message that when you go to a networking event, people are going to be excited and inspired to want to hear more. And you've identified a niche, so you know what networking events to go to. Like 97% of the room put their hands up. The sad part was I said, you know, keep me, do me a favor, keep your hands up if this is the most time you spent on marketing since you started your business. And like 85% of the room <laughs> kept their hands up. So the key is this template works if you spend the time doing it, because there's no point doing social videos. I mean, I always say to people, if you can't be the clearest, you have to be the loudest. That's why people online blog every day, podcast every day. I'm not the loudest, I'm just the clearest. And to my ideal clients, oh my gosh, I've heard your message before. I'm seeing it again, I'm seeing it again. Most people don't even remember you if you're not clear, even if they've seen you hundreds of times. Now, once you do that, first thing I always suggest, before you take it online, you need to embed it into a networking conversation to see if people really do lean forward and are interested. So because because of that, I would really recommend you go to the introvertsedge.com forward slash networking and there it'll outline, you can download the first chapter of my, my, my new book, The Introvert's Edge to Networking, and it'll give you the full step-by-step system on how to network effectively. And it'll also get you over the fact that you can succeed as an introvert with networking. Then, now you've got a client, what are you gonna do? You've got to sell to them, right? So I would suggest you go to the introvertsedge.com and there, my publisher hates me when I say this, you don't need to buy that book. If you just download the first chapter, You will literally be able to grab the seven step process, grab what you currently say and fit it into it. First thing you realize, especially if you're one of those jargon salespeople, is it will stop you from saying things. Because if it doesn't fit, leave your fire hose at home. Those things will not fit into the script. And because of that, you'll then realize there's some things out of order and there's some gaping holes, which will usually be around telling story, which is the heart of sales. It's the heart of networking. It's the heart of podcast interviewing, right? You want to educate and inspire. So you'll realize there's those gaps and then you fill those gaps. You'll double your sales in the next 60 days. 
Man, Matthew Pollard, your website, matthewpollard.com. Matthew, this has been absolutely fantastic. Go get the free chapter, uh, get the seven seven steps. Uh, also, when you click, when you go there, you can also click on the first time visitors start here. You've you've made it really easy for people to get to know you, Matthew. And, and that's all very intentional. I love what you do. You practice what you preach. Matthew, it's been a fantastic conversation. Love to have you on again sometime in the near future. Thank you so much, Matthew, for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on.